Hello, my dear students. Welcome to your geographies online class. So, in today's class, we will be discussing the chapter insulation. And the topic to be discussed today is factors affecting temperature of a place. So, in the last class, we discussed the basic concept about insulation and how they are affected. Today, in this class, we will learn that insulation as discussed in an earlier class we on earth don't receive of the same amount so that is the reason why there is a variation in temperature condition there are places which receives insulation for a longer time period while there are also places which receive insulation at the minimum so here we will discuss about how the temperature changes in different places. So the first topic, in fact, the first factor that determines the temperature is latitude. When we talk about latitude, we see that the earth is divided into two equal halves with a line of latitude that is 0 degree as equator and it goes until 90 degree in the north and 90 degree in the south so that means the maximum angle from 0 degree which is considered to be the latitude is 90 degree north and south now these latitudes we see from 0 to 90 north and 0 to 90 south does not receive the same amount of heat that is insulation. It is because the movement of the sun takes place between 23 and half degree north and 23 and half degree south that is Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. So these are the regions that receive the vertical rays of the sun throughout the year while above 23 and half degree the rays of the sun received are much slanted. So hence what happens in this, the lower latitudes, since they receive the vertical rays of the sun almost throughout the year, happens to have higher temperature, while the higher latitude, that is around 66 and half degree north and above until 90 degree, since they receive the slanted rays of the sun, here the heat is minimum. In fact, the insulation received is minimum. So this is the reason why we see as a latitudinal factor that temperature changes with latitude, increasing latitude. So with this we can sum up that lower latitudes have high temperature and higher latitudes have low temperature. So this is because of the heat received in this particular region. The second factor to discuss is altitude. Altitude, in other words, you can say height. We see, like, uh, let's just make a comparison before we discuss. You must be uh, observing it that hilly regions are more cooler than the plains. Now the question arises, why are the hills cooler than the plains? For example, if so to say Darjali Hills, it's much cool, the climatic conditions are quite pleasant, but plains like our area, it's very hot during the summer season. Why? This is because of height, that is altitude. So let us understand it this way. What we have here is, in the tropospheric layer of the atmosphere, with a height temperature tends to decrease. So that means here, as we go higher within the tropospheric layer of atmosphere, the temperature tends to decrease. And the rate at which the temperature decreases is 6.4 degrees centigrade for every 1000 meters we climb. Or you can also write it as 100 1 degree centigrade for every 165 meters as we go higher. That means here. 
This is known as lapse rate and the factor that is lapse rate results in the temperature to decrease. So that is why if this is the plain region that we have here and this as a mountain top, here the temperature will be less than as compared to the plain here the temperature will be for example, if this is 20 degrees centigrade here and this mountain is at a height of 2000 meters, then the temperature here will be 20 degree. For every 1000 meter, it is 6.4 degree. So it is 12.8 degree. Decreasing temperature, so it will be 20 minus 12.8. What we have here is 0.2 and then here we have 7. So if we have at place A temperature of 20 degree centigrade at place B the temperature will be 7.2 degree centigrade because of the altitudinal factor. Now to make note of is that not just one factor tends to affect the temperature of a place. In other words you can understand it that it's not just one factor that affects the temperature. Sometimes it may happen that the factor may be latitude or you may consider equatorial region like here 0 degree equatorial region we have discussed as lower latitudes that means the temperature would be high. So this is a factor of latitude. But if there is a mountainous area in the 0 degree then definitely despite being located in 0 degree latitudes or at the lower latitudes, the temperature may decrease or the temperature may be less and that is because of altitudinal factor. So that is why it is very important for us to understand all the factors together and not just emphasizing on just one factor that tends to affect the temperature. Now we will move on to the third factor. So let us understand this factor with the help of this diagram. So this is the sea, the water body is here now. This is place A which is close to the water bodies and this is place B which is at a distance from the water bodies. So here what we see is any places that is located very close to the water bodies will be affected by winds and ocean currents. It will be affected by the winds blowing from the water bodies towards the land also with the ocean currents that comes around this area. So what happens, based on these two factors we can also understand this. So what happens here is, any place that is located very close to the water body will have moderate condition. They will have a very moderate condition while place B which is far away from the water bodies will have an extreme climate. Extreme means either very hot or very cold and moderate means not very cold and not very hot. So why it happens is because see place A is located very close to the water bodies. Hence the winds and ocean currents that blows over the water bodies and then strikes the coastal areas where place A is located. It will have its moderate effect in this region. But by the time the effect of the ocean currents reaches the coastal areas the effect is all balanced. It cannot reach until place B. Or in the same way, if the wind is blowing from this water bodies, obviously it will be a cool wind. If it blows towards the land, so here what happens, the wind will have to travel a longer distance. So by the time it reaches place B, the wind will have no much effect. So this is where we can understand any place which is located very close to the water body will have a moderate effect because of the influence of the ocean currents and also because of the wind that blows over the water bodies. While the plates that are located far away from the water bodies will have an extreme condition that is either it will be very hot or will be very cold and that happens because the effect of winds and ocean currents that happens to blow over the water bodies cannot be experienced by place B or places as such like that of place B. So this is the third factor. Now let's discuss about the fourth factor, how the temperature of any place is affected.
So clouds and rainfall, they tend to change the temperature condition of a place. For example, during the daytime, if the place, so this is place A again, if the place happens to have a cloud cover over it, then during the daytime, the cloud obstructs the direct rays of the sun falling on the earth and hence place A will not be very hot though it will be warm but will not be very hot while in case of place B here there is the direct rays of the sun falling on place B hence the temperature there will be much higher than as compared to place and as night falls all the temperatures that have been conducted within place A, that means the dust particles or air molecules that holds the heat during the night time as it releases, the cloud again obstructs and does not allow all the heat to pass out from that particular place. It rather returns back onto the ground and hence during the night time, the place that will have cloud cover will be more warmer. Well, in place B, since there is no cloud cover, it's all empty during the night time. The heat is radiated back to the space, and hence it becomes much cooler during the night. So that is why we say cloudy days and nights are much warmer than the cloudless nights. This is because of this fact. Now, in the same case, what happens here is now with the cloud getting bigger and darker. Precipitation in form of rainfall is inevitable. That means with the cloud cover coming in a place, we understand that it's about to rain. So if the temperature is higher in any place, the rainfall occurring in that particular place will bring down the temperature and will be under control. Then other places which are not experiencing rainfall. The fifth factor to discuss about are the moderator of temperature at any place is the slope of the land. So here we can understand in two diagrams or in two cases slope of the land in case one let's consider this as a mountain which is acting as a barrier to the winds that carries moisture. So here the wind is blowing from the water bodies it's coming from the water bodies and this wind that comes from the water bodies carries moisture with it. So we call it a moist wind. And this moist wind or the wind that carries moisture with it, when is obstructed by the land masses, that is relief for mountains or plateaus or any high elevated land surface, when is obstructed. It results in rainfall to occur in this place. And this side that, if, that obstructs the wind is known as windward side. While the opposite side of windward side is known as leeward side. So here this is how we see in case 1 the slope of the land affects the temperature of the place. So here what happens with the rainfall occurring in, in this slope. Here the temperature will be less, but on the leeward side, since the temperature is sorry, since there is no much rainfall, hence the temperature would be slightly higher as compared to leeward side. Almost similar is the case with the case two here. What happens is we see in the mountainous areas, the side of the mountain, not all the side of the mountain, receives the rays of the sun. If you take a, if you take an example of the Himalayas here. Consider this as the south part, southern slope of the Himalayas and this as the northern slope of Himalayas. The south facing slope of Himalayas is towards India or facing towards India while north facing slope of Himalayas is facing towards the land, Chinese land masses. So here what happens, now since the sun's movement is only up to 23 and half degree north which is passing almost to the center of India. So here what we see, the heat of the sun that comes or the light of the sun 
it directly is obstructed or it directly lies on the south facing slope of the Himalayas. But the north facing slope does not receive the direct rays of the sun. So hence, what happens here is the temperature of the south facing slope of the Himalayas is higher than as compared to the temperature of the north facing slope. So this is how we see that the slope of the land affects the temperature of a place. Now there are also other two factors to what is we call soil and vegetation. So this to understand in vegetation, we see any forested land masses or any area or a region that is covered by natural vegetation is comparatively cooler than the areas where there is no vegetation. For example, you can take deserts where there is no vegetation and equatorial rainforest where, where, where forest covers are maximum. So this is where we can see deserts are hotter with high temperature because there is no vegetation but here with the vegetative land masses or any region where there is dense growth of forest we find that the temperature is slightly less. Same is the case with the soil. There are certain soils which are water retentive and there are soils which drains out water very easily without holding it. So the soil which remains mostly moist and wet would result in lower temperature of the region than as compared to the dry soil which completely drains out the water. So this is all about the chapter class. Thank you very much. You all take care and stay safe.